This is a USB microscope. It's um, very useful for putting things on the little platen there. Zooming in, looking at small things. But about six months ago, I didn't want it to be like that. I wanted it on a tripod so that I could angle it from different perspectives and um, look at other stuff. So in desperation at the time, I resorted to this thing. Went out in the shed, grabbed a bit of um, stuff which wasn't strong enough to deal with the situation, so I had to reinforce it with some proper metal. But it's not very good. It um, fixes on at funny angles. It doesn't really got a lot of stability about it or adjustability. And it's just plain ugly, an inelegant solution. Plus it's made out of a stuff called well, well, vegetable. So it had to go. So this isn't going to be a very complicated part, but there are a couple of features that I need to use new tools on. That large hole, um, I don't have anything big enough to make a hole like that except for a boring head, which I've never used before. That'll be fun. And the tapped hole, I've um, rigged up a kind of tapping chuck to be able to tap threads in the milling machine on that so really excited to give that a bit of a try out other than that the basic design is going to be a straightforward block with some clamping feature on the end and a thread for the tripod got to have a stud screwed through one end and a lock like that in place that uh, don't need to go anywhere put a washer over the top of that stop the whole thing from wearing out and then last of all, a giant comedy wing nut because I don't have a lathe and I've got nothing to make thumb screws with. And of course I'm not going to make it out of marzipan, it's going to be proper metal, the good stuff. Now don't laugh at that clamp that I've got on the workpiece there. I've spent more time than I care to mention um, searching for pieces of work that have flown down the back of the washing machine. It's not a good thing to have happen. And it's not strictly necessary to get this part to an exact length, but um, it's good for practice. It's a little bit of a challenge every time. And it also helps to keep trying out the measuring tools. I'm finding micrometers uh, easy to use, but um, you do need to keep practicing with them. Otherwise you find yourself staring at these numbers time after time and having to remember how to read them. So always good to see if you can get it to an exact dimension rather than just chop it into pieces and make it roughly square. Now this was supposed to be 82 millimeters and it's gotten it to 81.98 mm, maybe good enough this is a edge finder that i'm going to use to find the position of the fixture of the vise now if i know the position of the jaw of the vise i'm going to know the position of the work that's going to be clamped in it the way this works is that that spindle will stop wobbling when it touches the edge of the vise, which is that point there. And you keep winding the handle to move it in, and it kicks out to one side, which is that point there. That is exactly on the edge of the vise there. One more time. kind of steady there and then it kicks out that's the zero point of the edge of the vise minus the dimension of that spindle but uh, that's another matter this is a vise stop that I'm setting up that will um, set the workpiece against that stop so that when I take the work out of the vise put it back in again it's always in exactly the same position useful thing to have so I'm going to move it over, uh, I think it was something like six millimeters to drill that hole. This is going to be the tapped hole for the tripod thread. 
Now I'm double checking it with a ruler because there's lots of arithmetic that has to go on to work out where to position cutting tools. It's very easy to make a mistake. You'll see that later on. This is the uh, tapping chuck that I knocked up out of an old chuck I had about a week ago. So that uh, head of that chuck it fits in the spindle on a shaft and it will always hold the tap square and central to the hole. One of the worst things about tapping is tapping them out of square because they bind up in the hole and the work doesn't fit. I was interested to see if I could do this entirely turning the chuck by hand without any bars or wrenches. Being aluminium it was uh, not too bad a thing to do. So all it is is a chuck with a bolt in the end and a hole drilled centrally. There's a video linked in the description on how to do that. This is the larger hole, I'm going to open it out to 10 millimeters. Now I do have bigger drills than that, but I um, didn't want to get them out. This end mill will open it up to 14 millimeters. Could get messy. make some Christmas decorations out of that. Alright now that is a boring head it has a single point eccentric cutter on the end of it and I'm fiddling with these screws you can adjust the amount of eccentricity and make ever bigger holes. So there's an adjusting screw there and that's what you use to gently tiny piece at a time send the cutter to a bigger and bigger diameter then you lock it up with the other two screws on the side. I've not used this before so I took about um, 10 goes at this to get it to final size. This is the final cut to try and get that hole to 16 millimeters. 16 millimeters is the diameter of the tube that's going to go through that clamp in the end. As you can see, it's just fine whispers of material coming out of that hole. And that hole ended up at 16.05 millimetres, five hundredths of a millimetre over. But let's see how the tube fits in. Well, that's not even split yet as a clamp, but it's, um, it's a good snug fit. Quite happy with that. I shouldn't really be doing this yet. This is a mistake. I'm going to cut the slot in the end and that's going to make the work so weak that um, I'm going to have a problem drilling a hole in it later on. But what I have to do is position that blade along the centre line of the workpiece. So I'm firstly putting the blade 0.1 millimetre above the top of the workpiece. The work is 19.26 millimetres wide and the blade 
is 1.5 millimeters wide. So I've got to calculate how far to move that blade down to get both center lines on the same plane. So this is going to be 0 0.1 for the feeler gauge plus 1.5 for the thickness of the blade divided by 2 plus the width of the workpiece divided by 2. And then I'll calculate that out to be 10.48. And that's how mistakes can happen. You just uh, try and do this in your head. You try and write it on pencil and paper and you still make mistakes at it because you're thinking of so much else. And you fall into the habit of double checking things with rulers and calipers and stuff like that to make sure you haven't made a silly mistake. But the silly mistake here is cutting this slot now in the first place. It's a very weak piece of work at this end and I'm about to make it a great deal weaker and I've still got a hole to drill. Now I've got to drill all the way through the end of that sort of clamp feature. And because I've made it so weak by cutting a slot through it, um, if I press down on that drill without packing it out with something, then it's just going to bend and flex and snag up and probably wrench off. So luckily I've got some wire that's the same diameter as that slot. I can pack that out to take the pressure, drill the first half of the hole and then take it out. I kind of got away with that and um, I'll take that wire out so it doesn't snag as I go through the bottom half of it as well. Could make some Christmas decorations. Now I have to admit that this is the uh, practice of the wood elf using glue to stick things together but um, I can't make a proper thumb screw so this is the way it's going to be. And I couldn't resist a bit of a clean up, a bit of polish. Not completely shiny, but just not ragged.
Now let's see what we've got. Yeah, looks pretty good. Just a little nip, tighten it up. The, uh, the thread amazingly fits. And the old plastic bracket, that will go up there. I say it's feeling pretty good. Yep. Yep. Up, down. What else can it do? Yeah, uh, sideways, that way. Yeah, can it go the other way? Apparently so. Yeah, that's um, that's that's it. Well worth it.